Welcome guys, today I'm going to be showing you a quick video on how to create a winter wonderland um, how to draw it in PowerPoint and then how to animate it on, in PowerPoint. Um, I might go over some of these details again slower in future because I'm covering a lot in a short space of time so I've pre-recorded this and then sped it up for you. Um, so first of all I'm using the freeform tool to draw um, a background. Um, what I want to do is duplicate the shape that I've created and then edit the points and um, what that does is create a, uh, an illusion of depth so I'm going to duplicate it change the color to a slightly darker version of the same blue and then click on right click on it and click on edit points and then you can bring those lines in those nodes inwards so that it creates um, a jagged look to the mountains now I use this idea in pretty much everything that I draw Basically what you need to remember how to do is duplicate, edit, resize and you can end up creating really great effects very quickly using uh, vector graphics. So now I need to group all that together and now I'm going to start creating the foreground. So again, use some basic shapes, create as many as you can and then you want to group it all together, copy, paste, paste, paste um, until you've got something that you like and I'm using a tool called Shape Union which brings all of those points together into one shape. I'm now using a gradient to create some depth. And now I'm going to create um, the foreground floor. So I want it to look like ice. So there's no real rules to this. I'm using um, jagged shapes and um, copying, pasting, and um, duplicating, editing, resizing, repeating. The more, you, the more you work with it, the quicker you'll get at it and the better it'll get. But this took me quite a long time, which is why I'm racing through it for you. Um, I just want you to get the gist of how to create these scenes. It's, it's not that difficult once you start putting some shapes together and like I said use references um, to show to give it an idea of what you want it to look like. And now I'm going to draw a Christmas tree. So again use the freeform tool and um, the technique I use is to create the top and then duplicate it and then edit the points, resize it, edit the points um, over and over again so that you can create a progressive um, uh, Christmas tree effect. So I'm using the color green obviously, but now I want to put some snow on it. So again, I'm duplicating the top shape and I'm just editing the points to make it look like um, each layer of the tree has got snow around it. So as you can see, I'm flipping it and rotating it. And I also want the um, each segment of the tree to be slightly darker to the previous one uh, just so that it um, it blends in quite well. I'm using a hint of blue on the snow. So now once you've done that you don't need to do any more work you just want to copy it, paste it, tilt it, flip it, rotate it um, so that you can create a whole scene um, using the original Christmas tree that you designed. Um, so it's coming together quite nicely but I think it, I want to make it look a little bit more Christmassy, so I'm going to use a um, predefined shape and again copy it and edit the points. Um, I'll go through this in a bit more detail in a future video, I think. Um, but as you can see, once you get used to editing the points, all you need to do is copy and paste, copy and paste, and edit the points. Um, it saves you a lot of work. Once you've got the shape that you like, you can start working with the colours. Um, I don't want it to be just a completely flat colour, I want to use gradients so it's going to be lighter at the bottom and darker at the top and I want to use some Christmassy colours so green and red will go well together. Um, but to save myself some work I'm just going to duplicate it and edit the colours. So duplicate, flip, tilt and recolour um, are the best tips to create variety um, and then you get a lot of work done for you know, your initial effort. Uh, see, all these presents were created using the same initial template. So it's time to animate now. So what I'm going to do is group everything together in the foreground, so the trees, the, um, the floor and the presents, and I'm going to um, copy and paste it and stick them all together. So you want to zoom right out, make sure they're perfectly aligned. Once you've done that, you want to copy it, delete it, and then paste it back as a picture. So it's all one image, so then you haven't got um, all of those vectors being moved around you've just got one image and that will make the computer um, run 
the images a lot easier. It would be easier for you to manage them too. You can also crop things that you've got as a picture. You can't crop things that are vector based. You can crop things that are image based. So it, it gives you a lot more control over it. And what I want is the foreground to be longer than the mid midground, and I want the midground to be longer than the fore, uh, the background. And you'll see why when I start animating. So make sure you use the layer tool, bring everything to front, and then send the, the background to the back layer. As you can see, I've got a blue line there, and I've put it at the bottom so I can use it as a guide. When I start animating, I need to drag um, the end point uh, manually and it's hard to keep it all aligned. So what I've used is the animate tool um, move to left and I've moved the arrow as far to the left as I possibly can and using the animation pane I've set with previous and I've set a rough time to it about 35 seconds. Now if you make a shorter one it won't need to take so quite as long. Um, now the the animation that you're going to use, you want all three of those segments to start at the same time and finish at the same time. So the way to create that parallax effect, that the foreground is moving faster, um, is created by making the foreground travel further than the midground and the background, but in the same amount of time. Um, I made the mistake earlier of making the making them all travel for different lengths of time. That did make them all um, move at different speeds, but it meant also that they stopped at different times. So when the animation finishes, it didn't work very well. This is very important. Once you've got your animations how you want them, you want to make sure you get rid of smooth start and smooth end. It's a very annoying um, default, um, but it, um, it, it doesn't work for your animation. Um, this is the end result. I hope you like the video. I know I've all raced through it, but a lot of my videos do take a lot of time to get to the point, so I'm trying to get th through things a lot quicker for you guys. Um, if you like this, please subscribe and um, comment below with what you think. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.